right, we're back for another episode of VHS Revolt. I am Shane. I'm Chet. And we are back in the hairy, muscly arms of action movies with 1978s? 77s. 77s, excuse me. Breaker Breaker. Starring Chuck Norris, Sands mustache, or beard. Or red hair. He's blonde. He's got kind of a Prince Valiant kind of haircut. Kind of Donny Osmond, it, Don. like, back when he had the bowl cut-ish thing, before he really got flowery with it. Well, first off, I want to tell everyone, please go to our Facebook page. It's Facebook forward slash VHS Revolt. You can go there to get all the news on the podcast. Because despite the fact that this is probably the 20th episode we've recorded, this might be the first one put out. And this may be the first. This is definitely going to be the first one where we we mention our social media. Absolutely, our so. one page. But if you go to our Facebook page, it's going to have links to our where you can uh, find the podcast, where you can find our Patreon page. To, oh shit, we're going to have a Patreon. Yeah, guys, we need microphones. We need head headphones. We need equipment. We so, need movies. And we need movies as well. So Netflix and Hulu are drying up. Our personal stashes only have so much that qualify for the uh, criteria we have set. So if you're a fan, we'll take uh, all you know, your money. Anything you can spare. Alright, now that we're done with the plug, let's get back to... Uh, we're kind of getting back to action after... Well, I, it's weird to keep talking about uh, not getting back to because it's going to be the first episode we put out. <laughs> but uh, we, we deviated. Were, yeah, we deviated. But we're starting with action because that's where this is. That's the bread and butter of this show. And we wanted to start at the very beginning of one of the most celebrated action stars' careers. So we start with the first starring feature of Chuck Norris's career. And man, what a career it was! Indeed. <laughs> Let's, all right, the, the whole Chuck Norris joke thing, it has to come up at some point during this. I hated Chuck Norris jokes. I was going to leave, the, I wasn't even going to touch that. You know, because... you have to touch it. It's an elephant in the room. And you know what? Chuck Norris jokes started off as Vin Diesel jokes, and those were better. Did, is that where it started? Yeah. See, the Vin Diesel thing went over my head. I didn't ever hear those, but I did hear the Chuck Norris ones, and I admit for the first day or a week i'm like okay more and more people uh kept making them and then eventually no joke i actually saw chuck norris at a like political rally in davenport and uh the whole thing got capped off by who the guy who introduced him just read off a bunch of chuck norris jokes and was like who's the man who got bit by a rattlesnake and then later there was a death in three days but it was the rattlesnake and then the crowd was supposed to shout Chuck Norris, but everyone just kind of coughed. Oh, no. Well, there was probably a couple people who did the <sighs> shout. But anyways, Chuck Norris came out, and he did his bit where he was obviously paid $5 to say, I'm Chuck Norris, and this is my man. And that was it. Did you ever see, uh, there's like a mid-90s, I want to say Survivor Series, maybe SummerSlam, where Chuck Norris makes an appearance, and he's really? supposed to be like an outside you know, enforcer, and he literally just walks out like mid-match, stands in the aisle, and just like awkwardly watches the match for like however long the match is, 30 minutes. The Tito Ortiz. And they just keep cutting to him. And he's in his whole like Walker, Texas Ranger, like cowboy regalia. Does he have a shotgun? Hell no. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, uh... Because, I mean, that would make some sense of it. They're not going to pull some dirty heel shenanigans You know, I... Because being not so much... I may have missed the chuck norris era a little bit because of my age so that was one of my first memories of him was watching like a wrestling pay-per-view in the mid 90s so that's something else i want to touch on was there really a chuck norris era oh yeah he's, he, i mean he's bottom of the barrel for action stars he, really he pretty much on the back of chuck norris was canon films built and without canon films we would not have probably half of the movies we'll end up covering on this podcast so for that, I thank him. Um, he had a lot of those. Hell, I can't even name them. I know he had some bullshit reason like Vietnam. Oh, Delta Force. Yeah, those kind of things. Um, he had a movie called The Octagon. He had a little bit of a run. He was like, he kind of had the early 80s under his belt. And then once really Sly started to get into the action. Sylvester Stallone and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, and then once Arnold got in, there was no room for him in the market. And then once you really, once you get... Fucking Jean-Claude in there. Jean-Claude. Steven Seagal was yeah. around. So to me, 
he Chuck Norris was kind of filling that void that well because he did the kung fu so he's kind of filling that void that uh that was kind of the thing is the big selling point for Chuck Norris he actually did karate and he was, and was white supposedly it, well I yes, think I think that's what it was they're like he was, Listen. A, he was a karate kicking white man they're like Bruce Lee's gone and they're like man Hollywood's like man that was a hard enough Jackie sell. Chan's still over in China yeah so they're like that was a hard enough sell uh who can we who can we bring to america who can do kung fu and they're like we got him it's wait Chuck. that guy had bruce lee beat up yeah he's the, and he's legitimately probably well i don't want to piss anyone off what, well you oh. go for it oh he's <laughs> more legitimate than bruce lee let me put it that way uh, probably he's an actual world champion yeah, I mean, it's pretty hard to tell, you know, with history and supposedly Bruce Lee out all these fights that nobody knows about. But at the same time, we watched Chuck Norris's it was full point, contact it was matches. Point fight. And my God, they were just flailing at each other, just kind of getting points for... Ugh. It was a different time. It was disgusting karate is what it was. We didn't have MMA. Yeah. To, like, MMA really... Or- MMA did a lot of damage to the world of badass martial arts in the sense that now, I mean, people are pretty aware that it doesn't work the way that we used to think it worked. Right, and you just can't have an actor come out of nowhere like Chuck Norris or Jean-Claude or Steven Seagal come out of nowhere and automatically have this mystique of being a badass yeah. because they say they are experts in whatever martial art it is. And don't get me wrong, they are experts in those martial arts. It's just that most but of those... those martial arts are pretty... And yeah, effective. they're good for movies, but they don't work in real life. Nonetheless, let's get into this movie. Let's uh, get into this, this movie, fir- The first thing I want to take a look at is the cover art of the VHS. So, you guys can Google it. Breaker Breaker VHS cover. Take a look. We'll go over it. See what you would think if you were perusing the aisles at a video store. If Back this would... in the blockbusters, the family videos. And, man... And the videos are still around. That's impressive. They are. But, uh, man, one of the great things about VHS is where they're awesome cover art, especially movies from the 70s and 80s. When VHS first hit, they really put a lot of effort in making It the... wasn't just photos. They yeah. They really... You, the box kind of sold a lot of these movies when you're at the video store. You're like, maybe you didn't see the trailer or... Because you couldn't just access trailers. Yeah, the internet wasn't a thing yet. Yeah. So you just kind of had to go off the box. And I gotta say, the box for this, simple, doesn't quite get the job done for me. Yeah, it's pretty boring, honestly. It's just Chuck Norris staring off in the distance. There's a shitty painted eagle behind him. And I think the selling point of this is obviously just Chuck Norris. They're not trying to sell anything else other than Chuck Norris. I think the DVD cover that you just showed uh, does a better job where it shows the real important part. And obviously the title of this movie is Breaker Breaker. But I need to see a semi truck on that. Well, it does say it does have a shitty tagline: "The Battle Cry of the Great Truckers' War." Oh, which? Oh, you that's a bad tagline. And it you really don't see like a great truck. They really hype that up, and there's really not a great truckers' war in this this movie. Well, we'll get to that. Right. Uh, we see some truck in action, but I'll get to the 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 Blu-ray cover here in a second. I'll kind of set that up. Breaker Breaker was one of those films where. The producer or the director or the writer, whomever had the initial idea for this film, they they took the concept, so they had a a poster made, they got Chuck Norris to commit, and then they shot like a two-minute like pseudo-trailer, and then they shot that around and showed that to prospective investors. So, and this was done a lot in the 70s and 80s where they'd like pre-sell movies just off of, here's a piece of art, here's a person we can potentially have star in it please give us money so Which Bre- that had to be a picture of chuck norris because if so, he was in the room no this was it this was this was this was the cover art that was made for that so trucks driving through things it says breaker breaker and uh that's about it and, but they did have chuck norris in it so they're like listen we got chuck norris it's gonna be his first movie and it's about trucks so they are able to scrunch about two hundred thousand dollars together Scrunge? Scrounge? Yeah, it's the same thing. Whatever. So you can look up the alternative Blu-ray art, which is of the original movie poster. And it's Um, way cooler. It's way cooler. I don't know why this did not go onto the VHS. Looks pretty awesome. Really doesn't have anything to do with the movie. But it looks cool. There's a lot of mayhem going on. And it's mayhem because of a truck. Yeah, this would make sense if you had the battle cry, the great truckers. That makes sense. And... 
we've talked about this in earlier episodes, but those haven't been released yet. But my god, truck movies are just one of the best artifacts of the 70s and 80s. So I did a little research today since I had the day off. The Ugh. story of trucker movies? Yeah, this is hard to explain because truck drivers really don't have the cultural cachet today that they once did. Oh no, now we're just kind of aware that they're like road hobos. And they may be serial killers or... <laughs> they may or may not be serial killers. High on speed, they may kill you at any time on the highway. But once upon a time in the 1970s, these men were American heroes. Right. In the 70s and in the 60s, basically any time before the 1980s, a majority of truck drivers were owner-operators, which meant they owned their own trucks, and they took jobs by contract to deliver, deliver for people. Right. So they kind of had this mystique of being like their own boss, kind of drifting around, doing whatever they wanted. Later on in today's society, it's been you know monopolized by different shipping companies, and they you basically work for someone. You don't own your own truck. So they had this whole mystique of being these people out on the highway, being loners. Cowboys. Cowboys, basically. And so that was first exploited in country music, obviously. That was... Truckers probably listen to country music. Now we're talking about normal country music, not that trucker rap. No, we'll get into the trucker rap. We'll get into trucker rap. But, you know, so that'd be obviously some subject matter some country musicians might want to tackle. So you got some trucker songs um, that kind of tied into this mystique of the trucker as like a modern day cowboy. And then in real life, you had a lot of different things happening. The 70s was kind of a counterculture kind of time. And with truckers, it kind of tied in because at the same period, you had a lot of government legislation that affected the trucking industry. We had a 55-mile-an-hour national speed limit. Thanks, Obama. Can you think? Yeah. All the way back in 19-whenever. Back when he was, was like still 12. being conceived in Kenya. <laughs> You Can you imagine <laughs> only being able to drive 55 miles an hour? Oh, fuck no. Yeah, fuck that shit. That said, at the same time, I bet there was way fewer police and you could w go faster. Well, these truckers were pissed. So that kind of um, put the truckers in, into popular conscious because they were one of the regular people who were like, yeah, fuck the 55 mile an hour speed limit. And truckers are like, yeah, we're with you. Fuck that. So then we get to this whole trucker rap <laughs> cb radio music which, that's did that start with uh convoy what happened is convoy came out in 1975 and went not only did it go straight to number one on the country charts it went to number one on the pop charts i yeah i'm aware of that and i don't get it <laughs> it's ba it's um I it's, mean, you people know trucker rap, I'm sure. It's, ba it's Just think it's a guy on a CB talking pretty fast. Like, Big Bear going down I-95, got a big load and he's hauling ass. I think it was like a novelty song. It's like Who Let the Dogs Out, kind of. Don't you dare <laughs> call Who Let the Dogs Out a novelty song. <laughs> I mean, I think it's just one of these strange things that kind of catch the zeitgeist. And it's po very popular for a finite amount of time. That's kind of what Convoy was. So this song is basically takes over the country. It makes CB radios extremely popular. Just people are having to have CB radios in their houses. They have them in their cars. Everyone wants to talk on CB radios because you can be uh, anonymous. You can make up a cool nickname yeah. and talk to people you don't know. It's basically like the proto chat room or message board. And unfortunately, that led to how many shitty 80s movies where we see some shitty little kid with a CB in their room talking to someone. Right, that's what I was going to get to next, is this led to a glut... I'm going to keep cutting you off on accident. <laughs> <laughs> this led to a glut of shitty... I call them trucker exploitation movies. Oh. But... Or truck exploitation, whatever you want to call better. it. That's better. Rolls off that's the better. Uh, truck exploitation movies in the 70s and early 80s, and it led to things like Dukes of Hazard and fucking all those Burt Reynolds movies... All these movies. Um, but the first trucker cowboy movie was probably 1975's White Line Fever, a film by Jonathan Kaplan. Wait, it wasn't Convoy? No, no, no. Convoy comes comes later. Really? Yeah, yeah. Well, there's a timeline here that you can follow. Convoy, the song, comes out in 75. It's huge. I thought that it was come out simultaneously. Oh, no, 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 no. And then the song just got bigger than the movie. No, the, the movie's trying to cash in on the song. I see. So... But uh, in 75, Convoy the Song comes out. It's a huge hit. That same summer, White Line Fever comes out. I'm thinking 
probably due to the popularity of Convoy, the song, and this movie White Line Fever. Um, it's probably helped by the song coming out because White Line Fever is a huge hit. Um, another movie made on a small budget. We haven't reviewed it for this show, but it's far better than Breaker Breaker. Which we have not said right. one word about, despite well, being 16 I want to say, in, so. We're trying to set the table to why this movie even exists. White Line Fever comes out, huge hit. And it, it's really the movie that starts this whole cowboy, trucker, mystique on film. And I have to think that comes out, and then some guy who is, has aspirations to make movies comes up with the idea for Breaker Breaker. I have no other reason why it would exist, other than maybe he's a Chuck Norris fan. He's like, I can yeah. get Chuck in this movie. Chuck in a truck. Ooh, that's, that yeah. should have been the title of the movie, That, was, that should have been the tagline. <laughs> Chuck in a <laughs> Chuck truck. Chuck in a truck. Damn it. Breaker Breaker comes out in 1977 in April. It's a, actually a, a pretty good hit. I mean, they made it for like $200,000, and it basically played like drive-in theaters and like second-run theaters. It wasn't like a huge release, but it made a lot of money. It kind of set up Chuck Norris as a movie star or a guy able to star in his own movies. Thanks for that guy who yeah. made Breaker Breaker. Later on in 1977, you get the pinnacle of the trucker movie. You get Smokey and the Bandit which is the second highest grossing movie of 1977. Is that the pinnacle, though? Because we've watched Over the Top. Well, I don't, I don't <laughs> count. I don't put Over the Top in trucker movie canon. Uh, oh, it's absolutely a trucker movie. It's, what are you it's, talking it's, about? It's, it's loosely. It's on the out, outside perimeter because I think the trucker movie officially dies. Or oh, the I'll genre. fight you on this. Well, no. Over I'm, the Top is a truck. It's the trucker movie. Well, I don't know if it's the trucker movie, but it is a movie with a truck. <laughs> But, it's a movie about truckers who are trucking a lar large parts of the movie, and then at the end, he wins a nicer, newer truck. That is true. I, I think it's it's popularity within mass pop culture dies in the 1980s with Smoking the Bandit 2, which comes out. It's a moderate hit and over near the original. It Pretty much the genre kind of peters out after there. You get random, over-the-top. Rolling Vengeance. Well, I don't count Rolling Vengeance because that's more Come of, on, you son no, of no, a no. bitch. I'm, what I'm saying is like a major movie released by a major studio. Okay, I guess. Okay, that's more of a truck exploitation movie is Rolling Vengeance. <laughs> and But over the top, that was a big but. That's probably the last time you see them throw a, a lot of money at a, a concept of a trucker in a movie. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. You had Smoking the Bandit 2, which kind of ruined it. I get to circle back around to Convoy. That came out in 1978. That was kind of, that was the pinnacle in the sense of that was the movie that was probably given the biggest budget of out of all these trucker movies. It was given the biggest. It was given a serious name director attached to it, a real artist, and it came out. It did moderately well, but nowhere near the Smoking the Bandit level. So we're already on the downslope of the genre after Smoking the Bandit. So that's really the the height of the genre. But uh, I think the death knell. Now, I don't know if there was a certain time, but nowadays, if a trucker's in a movie, you know full well they're going to be in the truck, he's going to take his dick out. Exactly. When did this happen? That, yeah, that is a huge 180 from where we were previously. I don't know exactly when we moved to uh, truckers or just well, shifty road rapists. but I think uh, you have uh, Big Trouble in Little China. It came out in the mid-80s. Features a truck driver as a hero. Yeah, he never pulled yeah. his dick out. No, and then later on you have... Uh, and that was the Kurt Russell. Yeah. That's prime dick. And that's prime dick. And he's a good guy. He's not pulling his dick out. And around that same time you get over the top with Sly. So the trucker's still in good standing up into the mid-80s. It's not until maybe the 90s where you start to see... I think that's where you get the greasy truckers. I'd say, you know, I think it may it may start with Thelma and, Thelma and Louise. There's a scene with the sleazy trucker in there. That, I, may, that probably did it. That may be where it started. And it may be, in real life, truckers started yeah. getting sleazy, or it's just getting sleazier, I don't know. Or maybe they, they people always just were. realize, yeah, there you go. It may have been the trucker rap genre was dying. And the trucker rap genre died. Now, alright, we gotta finally get to this movie because it's 20 damn minutes. I appreciate the backstory, but let's talk about some Breaker Breaker. It opens up with some trucker rap, uh, you know, just some guy fast talking on a CV, and we see Chuck Norris just... He's driving his truck, like, kind of giggling for some reason, just listening to all the truckers having good old trucker conversations. Well, that's not how this... Whoa, I gotta stop you there. Because that's not how the movie opens up. Isn't it? 
<laughs> it opens up. Oh with, no, it doesn't. You're right. I'm pro- sorry. We have a little prologue. Uh, the movie opens up with Judge Trimmings. Judge slash mayor slash drunk. Drunk slash cult leader. It's really unclear. Basically, they've been given a city chata. City chata. <laughs> For Texas City, California, they're no longer gypsies. They have their own town. He does describe them as road gypsies. So basically, I guess what's happening here is you have this drunk judge character who it looks, it appears as if they've bought an old West town movie set. Movie set. <laughs> there you go. They've they've purchased an old West movie set, and, they and they're just gonna live in it. Created, they've made it into a city, and they're gonna live in it. It turns we'll, out we'll find out they're what they're going to do with things. It. You know, I did some research, and actually, uh, Charles Manson and his cult, they lived on an old movie ranch. Huh. So I thought maybe this is where the inspiration came from, like a cult-type thing, living on a movie ranch. I also just like the idea, the fact that they called it Texas City is fucking stupid. Grant, well, they named the city after his dead son named they, Tex. Yeah, who's they kind of set up as it was his idea to set up this community and i think maybe there's some subtext that maybe tex was more of like a peaceful guy and wanted to have yeah. like a hippie commune kind of thing and then his drunk father the judge was like nah we can take people's money <laughs> so then he had to kill tex so he could he could run the town yeah texas city could just be like you know how there's chinatown in new york this i think that's this town i think that's what they're getting at they're like I think whoever made this movie is obviously some Hollywood guy, so he's like, Texas is fucking crazy. This is like, these, they're bringing Texas to California. <laughs> this is where all the hipsters out in California go to get a good steak. Little Texas. Little Texas. Big trouble in Little Texas. Could have been. <laughs> <laughs> they should have went with that title. Uh, just it's Kurt Russell wanders into a trucker movie and is useless there. Well, uh, pff, Chuck Norris does a little bit better than Jack Burton, I guess, in the... the fighting category oh i mean of course he's chuck norris so of course he's gonna throw some karate it's gonna be mildly impressive i guess we go right into the now we go into now chuck we go norris into proper we got some trucker rap it is what i'd call low grade trucker rap yeah it's i mean it's not convoy they didn't pay for that this isn't convoy or uh eastbound and down eastbound and down those big are, bear those, <laughs> big bear you never watch super troopers oh, no. oh yeah i know what you're talking about I think you're about Teddy Bear, which is a great trucker rap song about this handicapped kid. Now, what? <laughs> <laughs> okay, who, who we, don't, we cannot keep getting away from this movie, oh. but we'll talk about that okay. later. <laughs> Teddy Bear is great, guys. Check it out. All right, so he's uh, it's Chuck Norris. He doesn't have his beard. He's got blonde hair. Uh, he's wearing like a denim jacket over a bright yellow V-neck Dude, t-shirt. Dude, his, 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 uh, his outfit in this movie is pretty awesome, I have to say. I, I enjoy it. The bright, bright yellow with the blue jean tuxedo is awesome. Absolutely. He's going full 70s. Uh, The hair I'm not a big fan of, but I just want Ginger Chuck Norris out there. The hair I didn't so much have a problem with. I would have preferred some facial hair, though. The facial hair you need. A lack of beard is very distracting on Chuck Norris. It really is. That's his signature. Half those Chuck Norris jokes are about his damn beard. He's not an unattractive man, but he's not an anything spe- special to look at no he's definitely not the beard definitely helps chuck so chuck rolls into town with his truck uh he's asking where his little brother's at he's this... asking where his little brother is and he's down at the sickle park yeah he's riding some motocross they're just kind of riding dirt bikes around this hill for about 20 minutes where you're uh, way too long. forced to watch we just wa- they're not doing tricks or anything they're just kind of going around on this hill really shitty motorcycle riding yeah eventually he falls over and chuck norris come gives him some guff he's like oh uh, can't handle that bike huh and he's like oh can't you can't handle it either why don't you give it a shot nah you chick it and then they start wrestling man they don't even say any of that but that would have made way more sense because uh, there was a little bit of like oh you want to give it a ride and he said no and he called him a chicken i thought he said something that? about looking for clams what maybe i just <laughs> oh maybe when he you know what you eight. guys rewatch this movie maybe i can't hear but yeah so they start wrestling around in this dirt and this is we don't really know their brothers yet so it's really homoerotic this wrestling is and also chuck norris looks like he's pushing about 40 already and he's <laughs> wrestling with his brother in the dirt it's a little weird and this is a, yeah, this is like 
he, maybe he has his driver's license, I guess, but this is a young guy. I don't have a big brother. Is this normal, even into adulthood? Oh, God, no. Do you wrestle in the dirt? Uh, you don't wrestle in the dirt. I have, uh, my brother used to do some wrestling moves on me, like the power bomb and the suplex, you know, rolling around in dirt holding each How other. How old is your brother? Uh, is, he's... is he older than you? Or oh, younger? yeah, he's like 35. Okay, so <laughs> when you guys go meet next time, are you going to wrestle? Uh, maybe. Okay. Probably, I wouldn't imagine so. Uh, it would be a weird thing to start out of the blue. And ru- I mean, like, wrestle, like, rolling, grappling on the ground, awkwardly rolling in the grass. Laughing the whole yeah. time. No, it's, there's there... a whole lot of homoerotic subtext in this movie, and I'm someone who, you know, a lot, I'm a big fan of the UFC and MMA, so people will see that and like, oh, you mean the two naked guys hugging each other? I'm like, you need to shut the hell up. But this is just kind of men holding each other, sweaty, staring. I just think they're really close brothers. I thought it was sweet. You lying son of a bitch. We watched this movie, and we both immediately went to homosexual overtones. Well, You're I wasn't trying a... to play Mr. Politically Correct on this podcast. No, I'm saying after I realized it was his brother, I was like, oh, and hey, that this movie would have been a hell of a lot more progressive if that wasn't his brother. They should have went that way, <laughs> but they did not. But um, I, I just take it that they're really close brothers. So yeah. His brother has an awesome shirt on this whole movie. It's like a multicolored Henley. I'm a big fan of that shirt. Another great 70s shirt. Yeah, they do. They are rocking the shirts in this movie for sure. So after this scene, uh, he goes on to this, of course, we have to have a trucker diner. Uh, Outside, he runs into this lady who's driving a truck. He gives her some shit, and uh, she jokes back with him. But it turns out her husband's still in the truck. Because he got paralyzed by a big beast of a man named Strode. Yeah, fucking, she builds this Strode up like a motherfucker. This guy... This guy's fucking Andre the Giant this listening guy to her. broke her fucking husband's neck. Paralyzed him. And he's just sitting in this truck, propped up. Like, he's got a neck brace on, I guess. <laughs> they make it seem as if he's in, like, a coma. Because he doesn't acknowledge chuck norris well he's kind of looking at her he can't really move but, but he doesn't talk and chuck isn't even like hey jack how you doing here you got hurt yeah that's kind of a dick move by chuck really. <laughs> they just he just talks about him in front of him with his wife he's like oh yeah i'm sorry your husband got the shit kicked out of him so strode's you know getting established as the big bad of this movie i love the, the big line. tough oh yeah sorry i didn't mean to cut you off. no go for it Strode is being built up, built up as, as the big tough, but I do love this line that the lady trucker tells Chuck Norris as he consoles her. He look, She looks at him and says, I never thought I'd let a man see me cry. That's progressive right there. Uh, so she's That's a strong female character who never shows up again. She's a tough woman who she's doesn't cry in front of men. Not but even yeah, she, her paralyzed husband who may or may not be in a coma. <laughs> he is totally in a coma. I, he should not be in a truck. So we then we go in the diner. He's no, hanging no, out. No, 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 we're skipping a what? major no, element. <laughs> he has to send his little brother off. Does that happen now? Yeah, because then he oh, goes. I thought that happened after all nah, this. No, nah, no, he sends his little brother off on a little, uh, throws him a little he work. He goes on his first truck and run. His first solo truck run. He borrows the truck. He has to make a run. Uh, but it look, it's, uh, Turns out he's going through the area where people are being directed to New Texas, which, as we found out from this, <laughs> or Texas City, excuse me. That's so much better, New Texas. New Te- <laughs> Whichever, you know, this city full of hillbillies, uh, he gets wrangled into it. You know, we kind of get the hint from the lady that that's what happened with them. Yeah, so basically, the I guess the, the Strode, the bad guy, gets on the CB and, and they make up some sort of he pretends to be a trucker. Yeah, says they're like, oh, there's this is a detour. Yeah, there's you gotta take a detour, man. You got this is a shortcut, go this way, but really he's leading him astray. Yeah. And then a deputy shows up and's like, oh, this road's closed. You gotta take this back road here. And this, I'm sorry, the little brother should know this is shady, but I guess it's his first solo run. He hasn't had a lot of experience with shady cops. But this cop just like pulls out of nowhere, blocking his way. He literally just drives in front of his car, and they're in, like, a desert or something, so where he even came from, who knows? And the brother's like, why'd you do that? And he's like, I just had to. She's like, okay. And plus, this guy's rocking... You gotta stop. There's gonna be an accident up there, or else you're gonna wait a while. You almost killed us both to tell me that I have a wait if I go up there? And this guy has quite the malicious looking mustache oh so, it's a prime villain mustache so i mean he might as well be twirling it it stops just short of like a handlebar but man it it's a thick full mustache 
the kind that have stopped happening since the 70s. Yeah, and this this guy is actually Officer Bowles. Deputy Bowles. Deputy Bowles. And I don't want to give anything away, but we'll be seeing a lot of him later. <laughs> we will, I guess, we see a lot of Deputy Bowles later, as it turns out. Uh, but while all this is happening, Chuck Norris is in a diner. He meets up with his old buddy, who's kind of a drunk guy wearing an ascot. The guy's, you know, making jokes about being drunk and, you know, slapping women on the ass and all that. Because it's the 70s, you know, this is where we're at in society. Yeah, this the this guy's actually, his name's Burton, um, the best friend guy. He's actually portrayed by the actor Jack Nance, who you may recognize from uh, many David Lynch films. Um, I didn't pick up on it. I was like, that guy looks vaguely familiar. And then I had to look it up. And I was like, man, yeah, he's in Eraserhead. He's in Blue Velvet. He's on Twin Peaks. Um, I was too distracted by his beer of choice. This man's drinking Coors Heavy. Coors Heavy. He's well, going for the banquet beer. Hey, Jack Nance, the actor, is quite the character, so you can look him up on the internet. He seems like the kind of guy that drink a lot of Coors Heavy. I could see it. I mean, just looking at that guy, he looks like a Coors Heavy man. He has some awesome eye acting. That's oh, why yeah, I pulled this off. He's got some crazy eyes. He's doing the crazy eye like through that entire diner scene. He's, he's a hell of a guy. He's probably... One of the better characters in the movie, in my opinion, well, for me. he exists for 30 seconds. But, but he doesn't, yeah. You get him in small doses, and then he just disappears, unfortunately. Oh, he disappears real hard. I mean, I should point out at the start, this is just my opinion, I think the weakest actor in this movie is Chuck Norris. Oh, of course. He's terrible. Which is odd. In a low-budget film, you think you're, it'd be full of terrible actors. I'm not saying these people are good actors or great actors. There's no one... There's a lot of terrible actors. But Chuck is definitely the worst. He is definitely the worst... Uh, as far as second place, I don't know if it's because he's a, a w terrible actor or because he had to play the offensive part, but there's a guy portraying a mentally handicapped Yeah, hillbilly. Arnie. Man, that'll be a terrible, but we'll hold off on Artie for now. Arnie's definitely number two, but I just want to mention that uh, Jack Nance does show up in here, and he's somewhat of a well-known actor if you're into David Lynch movies. Anyways. Anyways, uh, you know, this surly... Uh, diner waitress comes up you know she's a tough trucker di uh, waitress not putting up with their shit and they ask for the usual because this is you know just letting us know they come here all the time they want the usual and which it, turns out to be a fucking salad no it's like sandwiches no he got a salad well i believe later on they do both receive two plates of sandwiches do they as well but i just like the idea that chuck norris says i'll have the usual and then uh, his best buddy Burton. This is how you know they're best buds, because he goes, I'll have the same. Because they, they have the same usual, man. They go hang out at this truck stop, get the same sandwich. Well, that or they just have different usuals, and she knows both of them. Damn. If she does, she's a hell of a waitress, because I could How many usuals can you remember? Oh, back when I was a waiter? Uh, plenty. You could? Oh, yeah. It's, it's easier than you'd think. I, mean, I don't know. I may not be cut out for that line of work. Well, I wouldn't recommend it to begin with. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, it's time... To get into the staple of trucker movies, which I had no idea this was a connected thing till I saw it over the top, but they're just enjoying their lunch, and all of a sudden, this massive, bald, fat guy wearing a mesh tank top, straight out of Commando, like Bennett's sh shitty mesh chainmail tank top thing. Bennett's father, this or is uncle. Bennett's father. Uh, th yeah, his drunk uncle, a uh, fat Polish guy with a legitimate curly mustache, comes up, and he says, "Chuck." You're the champ, but I think I can beat you in 10 seconds. It's time for some arm wrestling. And I also want to point out that he's also accompanied by a pirate. Yeah, oh, I forgot about the pirate. This guy, he has a whole posse with him, including a pirate, fully dressed up like a pirate, the big feathered hat and everything, another guy in like a uh, mesh vest. Yeah, a lot of mesh going on. A lot of mesh. I didn't know mesh was such a thing in the 70s, but man, this movie is fucking meshed out. Kaminsky, the badass guy, <laughs> is wearing a mesh shirt. Uh, this black bookie guy's wearing a mesh shirt. And There's a leather hat with that, of course. <laughs> well, because he's fucking from the streets. They're letting us know. <laughs> <laughs> this, the mean streets of California... Well, New hell, Texas. I'm thinking, you know, this is like some fuck. This is redneck California. We're probably up by Bakersfield or something. This ain't. We're not in L.A. That's for sure. What's the other thing I wanted to point out? Oh, before uh, Kaminsky or whatever the fuck his name is, the Polish Angel comes in. The, the, the Polish Angel. That is his name. That's whatever. Yeah. Before he comes in for the arm wrestling challenge, 
Uh, this guy does come up and warn Chuck Norris that he is there and he wants to arm wrestle him. And he looks like fucking... I thought he looked like Ashton Kutcher on, like, crack. He has, like, a thousand teeth. Oh, he had a lot of teeth. Yeah, I remember that guy now. <laughs> it's, it maybe Ashton Kutcher's, like, great un- uncle or something. I don't know. I I could see it. Maybe no. Maybe it's just me that seen the resemblance, but there's a little bit... I've never driven, you know, a semi-truck. Probably never will. I can't see my life taking that turn. <laughs> Is arm wrestling and trucking, are they really that connected? Because I swear every uh, trucker movie, there's some arm wrestling in it. They must be. I Any look- trucker bar, it's established, there's going to be a back room where they're gambling on arm wrestling. I am of the belief, simply what happened is, whoever the hell wrote Breaker Breaker put arm wrestling in it, and then whoever the hell wrote Over the Top watched Breaker Breaker. Because... <laughs> I don't know what the connection is. You know, I have to believe where the hell else would arm wrestling take place? It must, it has to take place in like dive bars, truck stops, fucking wherever big hairy manly yeah. men are. There's really no such thing as professional arm wrestling. Yeah, that league dissolved apparently. Yeah, there is going to be the World Arm Wrestling Championships this year. It's going to be live on ESPN. and then The main ESPN. Yeah. yeah. And then the week before... That's like, not the Ocho. Like three days before the event, the promoter was like, oh yeah, we don't have any money. That's not happening. <laughs> so, it's uh, arm wrestling struggling. It's it's, uh, it's dead is what it is. It's basically, Boxing is struggling. Arm wrestling is dead. Well, arm wrestling may have never been alive. We don't... It's hard <laughs> to say. It was fledgling and it just... It was the baby bird that never quite learned to fly. Granted, I will give over the top credit. It did make arm wrestling look awesome. Something Breaker Breaker is unable to do. So we this arm wrestling scene is terrible arm wrestling acting. They're like obviously not act arm wrestling whatsoever. They're just sitting there, kind of grunting. Their arms aren't shaking at all. Nobody's going back or forth. No one's sweating. No one's sweating. No but, one's like moving for leverage. Yeah, no, nothing. None of that's no. Nobody's going over the top. They're not tilting their well, cap I th- backwards. I think that's why they're in a stalemate because if someone knew the over the top technique, that match would have been over. Of course. But only Lincoln Hawk knows the over the top technique. And his son now. Yeah. Well, <laughs> indeed. The arm wrestling just goes on for way too long. Nobody's doing anything. So then they cut to a shot of the black bookie, like with a look of. He's getting worried because I guess. apparently Chuck Norris is winning this. I guess he's like not grunting as much. But yeah, so he but doesn't he bump into them and yeah, make Chuck Norris win? In. Well, no, they call oh, it off. Oh, it's a no contest. Yeah. Okay, so he bumps into him and then they're like, "Oh, what'd you do?" He's like, "Fuck you!" And then a bar fight breaks out, and uh, it's not a great bar fight. You know, no. Chuck Norris doesn't even do anything. Well, he fucking kicks. Kaminsky in the face once. Does he? That's it. I didn't yeah. think Kaminsky did anything either. No, it's shot real shitty. Like Kaminsky, like comes up behind him, and then the waitress is like JD, and then he turns around and sees Kaminsky, and then he just like kicks him in the head, but it's like shot like a close up of Kaminsky's face, so you just see like a foot come into frame. Ah, uh, the old cartoon. Shot. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that's and, uh, the Batman fist coming towards the camera, then pow. And a lot of this movie is kind of done like that. Yeah, I mean it's not good action. And that's one of the things where, I mean, we can hold off on talking about that till we get to a real action scene, but Chuck Norris's action skills, not impressed. Not Well, you know, he'd only done a couple movies before this, and he had Bruce Lee there to fucking carry, chore- him. carry him and choreograph the fights. So Chuck, this is his, you know, he's kind of being thrown out there. This is his first time, so I'll cut him a little slack. So while this is happening, uh, the brother has now been brought to the court of this shitty little gypsy town where he meets the drunk mayor who tells him that he's on trial for speeding and uh, resisting arrest, arrest, something else, and for driving your truck too heavy. Yeah. And then so he says the fine's $500. Or 500 days in jail. Or 500 days in jail. Which... Which sounds insane. Yeah, which is obviously nuts. So the brother just, you know, basically laughs at him this whole time. He's like, you know what? Fuck you. You're just going to jail then. At which point he uh, he starts some kind of brawl. Does he, like, grab an officer? He There's well, Strode and Bowles are both there. I think he, like, grabs a nightstick and clubs one in the stomach and runs off. Uh, which starts 
Well, he jumps through a plate glass window. Oh, he does do that, and, and it's awesome. This is one of the only times in a movie I've actually seen someone jump through a fucking plate glass window. Like, it did not shatter the way you're used to seeing glass shattering. And movies. he actually gets fucking cut. He's ble- bleeding all over the he place. He is a fucking mess. So I do give the movie props for being like, hey, if a guy jumps through a plate glass this window... This is actually what happens. He should probably be cut a little bit, right? No, he probably should have been cut more because the way that window broke is Oh, like there was large. a huge shard. That was a guillotine at the end. It should have fucking killed him, to be honest. But nonetheless, I do give him props for that. So he runs through the town. He's begging everyone for help. Everyone's just laughing at him and shutting their doors. Eventually, he gets cornered in an alleyway, and they just give that whole weird evil chuckle, like, hoo, hoo, got you now, boy. And I gotta say, I am a big fan of this performance by Judge Trimmings. The actor who plays the judge, he's really hamming it up. I looked at his filmography. He's, he did a lot of television acting, a lot of theater, so you can see that. He's just yeah, kind, of a working, TV acting. kind of a working actor, kind of just hamming it up. What you always need in these trucker movies, what you need is a bad guy that will, like, ham it up. Oh, you really need a cartoon character. You, you need a cartoon character to play the bad guy. That's what. That's really... why we had Robert Loggia. <laughs> That's what sets apart a great trucker film from truck exploitation. Is you And I only know if this is a great trucker film, but at least the judge knew he had to ham it up in this. He basically it displays a drunk who's stumbling around, running this shitty fucking movie set down i can't believe we never got to see john lithgow as the villain in a trucker movie he would be perfect that was a missed opportunity he like uh what would he be like a mayor or something that doesn't want all these truckers in this town he's he's got (laughs) damn truckers i think these damn truckers all over the place i can't do a john lithgow impression no i mean it john lithgow is a national treasure so it's pretty hard to do an impression but uh this judge, man, Judge Trimmings, I I enjoy it. I enjoy it. If there's a scene with Judge Trimmings in it, I'm enjoying it. Yeah, he's not a bad character. We get some weird details about him, like he's hitting on ladies using a puppet. Uh, <laughs> he's just a fucking drunk. He's hammered. He's the hammered movie. through the whole movie. He has some barmaid waitress that I guess is his That's side his piece. Side piece, yeah. <laughs> Who he he just gets drunk all day. Like he's not judging much. And. That, so that bar that he hangs out in, that's the creepiest bar in America. It's just filled with antique dolls and puppets and shit like that. I will say this movie does have a little bit of a, like, weird, almost fever dream kind of thing to it because of the weird doll bar and the music is kind of weird at times. I think it's just a movie of the time. (laughs) So, uh, his brother's been missing for a while, so Chuck Norris gets a call. He gets a call. He's teaching a bunch of truckers to meditate. I don't know if they're truckers. He's at his dojo studio. They have mustaches. And he's wearing, like, it's a straight-up Elvis suit. It's like a black sleeveless shirt with a gold sequence sequence on the collar. Yeah, it's... It's flat out ridiculous. He's trying to teach them to use their third eye. Their third eye. That's his meditation technique. Uh, there's no, ex- is that, I guess he meditates wearing sequins that helps focus his chi. Well, yeah, you have to have your special meditation suit. But he gets the call from, shit, I don't know. Burton. Who, Burton. It's Burton, oh, his best Burton bud. Says, uh, he's his, cracking open a Coors. <laughs> he's cracking open his entire six pack of Coors Heavy, telling him that his brother's gone missing, and uh, supposedly he went missing around Strode's town. That's uh, Texas City. So, so Chuck Norris has to go down there to kick some ass. Now, why doesn't Chuck bring a friend with him or something? Like Burton. Because he doesn't need a friend. It's probably because he didn't have the money. But <laughs> or because that. Because Burton's well, they, really... I mean, they hired one person who knows how to fight in this movie. True. So they did kind of box themselves in at that point. Um, because it becomes blatantly obvious. Nobody in this movie knows how to do anything. And, ugh, what... Anyways, so now we are... Chuck Norris. Into the second act of the movie, I would say, for sure. He gets all loaded up in his sick-ass van. If it couldn't get any more 70s, we've got Kung Fu, we've got semi-trucks, and now we got a fucking tricked-out van. So it's a jacked-up van. The suspension's lifted. It's got a big golden eagle painted on either side of it, and it's, like, sky blue. I think it looks kind of cool. It's kind of cool. Kinda. That eagle looks like shit, though. Yeah, the eagle... They did not paint the eagle well. Not the best job. If the eagle would have been... If the paint job would have been a little better... It's just kind of like shitty in. mustard, brownish yellow. 
Is this does this seem like the kind of van? Yeah, it does actually. It never <laughs> was like does this seem like the kind of van that like a spiritual kind of meditation kind of guy would drive? And then I was like, well, he's a truck driver. Yeah, yeah, it's the, you know it's a mix of his trucking and his spirituality. Shouldn't they have tricked out the fucking semi? Shouldn't the semi had a sweet paint job? Oh, that probably cost way too much. Yeah, so I'm thinking. Like, his semi only showed up for, what, one, two minutes of this movie? Yeah, this, this, for a truck movie, not a lot of truck in it. Yeah, not a lot of, I mean, his truck especially. The moment he gets near the town, he a couple shot of hillbillies him. are just shooting at him with a rifle, and just hee-hawing all over the place, like, yeah, boy, you better get out of our town, we don't want you here. Which, why would they do that? Isn't their whole business bringing people in and robbing them? Well, it's because he was driving past their steel Still? Still? Oh, he did go... How do I say that? The still. The The still. So, you know, they're stilling up some moonshine, some backwoods, hillbilly Drano. So I guess basically this town exists because they they sell moonshine. They do all the crimes, basically. They they seem to hint that they they steal car... Like, they have a chop shop. Like, they steal cars and take them to the junkyard and part them out. And also, if you happen to drive through their town, they're going to definitely ticket you to make some money... Maybe steal your car and incarcerate you in a barn. Yeah, well, that, we find out later about the barn, which there's some rapey connotations going on there. But uh, this town is not a place you really want to drive through, which I don't understand. They're fixing it up, apparently, to make it like a tourist destination, but they're really rude to the people that drive through. Well, they got to, you know, rob the people first so they have the money for tourist traps. Oh, okay, so you think they're trying, at this point, they're just trying to build up money. Yeah, this is, okay. you know, this is the scavenging stage. Eventually, they build Disneyland. But And then they would be nice. And then they sell the moonshine at the Disneyland. But they would overcharge people for stuff and probably ticket them still, but they'd be nice. Like, just they'd, like the real Disneyland. they put on a friendly face. <laughs> so, since he got shot up by these hillbillies, his they apparently shot his radiator, so his van starts smoking, he has to pull it into this mechanic, where... We're introduced to Artie, who is a grown man wearing like a bright red baseball cap, a striped t-shirt, a bandana, a bandana around, around, around neck. his neck, and he's just hitting a tire with a hammer. Well, he's trying to get the tire. He's trying to get the tire off the rim. But he's doing it very incorrectly. It's also, and I I think this is supposed to be a hint, but it's hard to follow because of the movie. But it's also a truck tire. It is. I think it's supposed to be from his truck. Oh, could it be from his truck? That yeah, I, I think that's thought. what they were getting at. But anyways, <laughs> this guy, Artie, his portrayal in this movie of a southern handicapped man, where do you think that ranks for offensive <clears throat> portrayals of the handicapped? <clears throat> I mean, um, we got uh, I Am Sam's up there, Radio's up there. I mean, I, it seemed to me he's clearly inspired by uh, of Mice and Men. Um but that was a well done one. Well, this, John Malkovich played the hell out of that handicap. <laughs> this man. guy quite didn't have the acting chops to pull it off. He he has a stutter. He has a weird stutter. He stutter. He's already southern or redneck California. So he's trying to do a southern accent. He's trying to do the handicapped drawl. I don't know what you want to call that. And he's trying to do a stutter. Boy, buddy, you are biting off way more than you it's can like chew. It's like maybe he should have slept the stutter. Like, maybe he should have been a guy with a stutter, I guess is what I'm trying to say. The stutter would have been fine, I guess. Because it's like, I, but I feel as if he's insecure about his ability to play a special needs person. Yeah. So he's like, well, I'll just throw a stutter on there. Now maybe that'll get the point across. Yeah, I'm not even going to try and do his voice because it just feels wrong. Yeah. I mean, he probably should have stepped it way down. But anyways, this... Well, stutters <laughs> never come off good in movies. I mean, I give that kid quite a bit of credit in It. Yeah, he, he did a great... Well, he might actually have a stutter. I have did, never well, seen that kid before in my well, life. Well, <laughs> the character has a stutter, so it, I, I'm pretty sure it's a character thing, I hope. It's not the most offensive. I think I Am Sam is takes the cake. Yeah, I Am Sam. My God, that movie. I cannot, That was, like, nominated for Oscars, wasn't it? Well, it, that was, like, the mid-2000s, wasn't it? That was a rough yeah, time. Yeah, well, Crash won an Oscar in the mid-2000s. Yeah, so I'm saying. That movie's a burning pile of shit. Once VHS started to die... <laughs> that's when quality yeah, died so so chuck norris is on the hunt uh he tells the mentally handicapped guy and his brothers the mechanic that he needs a radiator they tell him he has to go down all the way to the city scrapyard to buy one so on the way he stops at the police station uh a bar 
Oh no, he does stop at the police yeah. station and no one's there. The janitor's like the judge. The ju- I can't. I don't know, he says some redneck shit like. <laughs> Dep- the judge is down over at the bar. <laughs> Deputy Bull is an officer strode. Except are on when patrol. the mayor's around. <laughs> Except when the mayor's around, mayor's always in charge. But he's over at the bar. So that's when we go over to the bar, and he's hitting on this lady who, she's got way too much makeup on. She, like, kind of looks like, like she's trying dolls. to look like a porcelain doll. Yeah. yeah. That's creepy. And this fuck, those creepy-ass dolls, nobody would want to get drunk in that. That's how you get nightmares. Dude, if you got fucking drunk in that bar... You'd die in at Jesus. least five days. Jeez. I mean, this is a trippy bar, guy. At least two of those dolls would follow you home and haunt your dreams. It was like someone's old sad aunt got lonely and put a bar in her house, but she didn't clear out her dolls. I'm pretty sure what happened is the guy that directed this movie... His great aunt died, and they just took all the shit from the house and put it in this bar for set decoration. <laughs> Here's our props. Yeah, <laughs> she loved dolls. Uh, I just imagine the crewmates every day just, hey, can we take this doll away? I keep seeing it in my dreams, and it's screaming that I'm going to die. And they'd be like, nope, we have to leave that one. That one, <laughs> we have to do a close up. All copious amounts of close ups of these dolls. They, they they really want us to be scared of them. They do feature it. So they they did have an understanding. I think that th- this is weird. Um, anyways, he goes in there, the judge basically blows him off, so Chuck leaves, and then we go back to the judge, and he's like, I want you to find out who he is. While he's playing drunk chess with yeah. this barmaid now. So, they make a call, and... They being Strode and Bull just kind of wander in right after, and, uh, get put on, in charge of beating this townie out, right, getting get him out of here. So he heads over to the diner, Yeah, to, you know, try and use their phone, have a nice meal, Meet a little tell, maybe? Huh? A little tell? Oh, get a little strange for the road. Yeah. He is a trucker. He is. He knows, he knows about them waitresses. And uh, he apparently knows know just how to talk to waitresses because this is some of the most awkward conversation. But they immediately have a connection. They immediately this have a connection. So he asks for the uh, menu. She gives him one. And then uh, there's this guy in the back who's kind of the stickler. He's like, hey, that's the wrong menu. And then she hands him another one, which is the out-of-towner menu where everything costs more. You better watch your step, Arlene. <laughs> better watch your mouth, Arlene. It's one of the better quotes in the movie. I got three quotes. <laughs> I mean, that guy's delivery is great. Uh, but anyways, so the he just orders a donut and coffee. And she, he's like, well, I'll take coffee. Does it uh, cost extra to have cream? And she loses her shit. Oh, she man. starts laughing for a solid, like, minute. It's a hell of a cackle. She just keeps laughing. She's like, oh, this is the funniest thing I've ever heard. They and then he's like, that. settle down, Arlene. It wasn't that good of a joke. And she's like, oh, he's so handsome. He's got blonde hair. And he's got, oh, look at he's those He's not a hillbilly. <laughs> I bet he meditates. <laughs> Look at that sequin black shirt with the gold uh, with the gold all along the trim. I mean, she is quiet taken. She's immediately. really t- that joke. Her laughing so long. I was that like a failure of the writers, or do you think Chuck was like, "Hey, I have this funny joke. I'm gonna say, uh, uh, does it cost extra for cream?" I within, and then he just insisted on doing it. If they would have built up the idea that things were more expensive for outsiders and that this town like really nickel and dime people maybe the joke would pay off but really i get in the context of the scene why that character would find it funny it's just something that we as an audience don't find funny no not funny at all it's not funny it's just not funny (laughs) but she thinks it's hilarious she's you know busting her sides up so he gives up on trying to eat. Uh, he How much asked, do you think that donut cost? They never even tell. Like well, that would have helped I with guess the that joke. Five dollars. Five dollar donut. Five dollar donut. It's just a cake donut. It ain't one of them fancy. Donuts. Oh, it was. Oh, not even. That was a whole wheat donut. A whole wheat. <laughs> well, you know, Chuck has to stay in shape. Yeah. Well, he was eating that salad earlier, so he earned himself a little treat. That's true. That wheat donut. So he gives up on eating. He's like, "Look, do you have a phone I can use?" And she starts telling him, "Yeah, just go to the back," and then. The cook pipes up again. Hey, it's out of order. So this Chuck's, town's out of order. Yeah, he has this sweet... Well, you said it with way more emphasis I than do. Chuck managed his entire movie. He's like, hey, this whole town's out of order. And then he wanders out. Yeah, his acting is so subdued, man. I, it's If that's what you want to call it, I would say it's terrible. <laughs> Chuck Norris 
I wanted to wait a bit longer before I kept railing on about it, but Chuck Norris is the worst action hero because he has no charisma whatsoever. Like, he can't do a one-liner to save his life. And his fighting, we're about to come up on, it doesn't, I mean, they kind of look like dainty little kicks he's doing. Well, I, you know, like I said, this was his first starring movie, and I'm sure he probably wasn't given any support, as in, like, having a stunt coordinator or anyone to set this up for him. He's probably on his own doing it. He's kind of limited. He probably had his hands tied. But, I mean, obviously I agree with you. It does not look great. <laughs> it, I mean, it doesn't look great. He can't act. He sounds just bored delivering his lines. I think he's trying to do kind of a, a cool guy, like a Dirty Harry, Clint Eastwood kind of thing. I guess maybe, but you have to sound like Clint Eastwood to pull that off. Like, he just kind of sounds like William H. Macy a little, like a little bit more subdued of a William H. Macy. Kind of looks like a buff they kind of have a similar like they could, Maybe, they could be related them. yeah like cousins oh that could be like a twins movie with you know like they did arnold and danny devito <laughs> they should have done William it. H. macy and chuck norris no one's gonna watch that nobody will watch it don't do it that could be like a terrible fx show oh where my like god they run a used car lot together oh my goodness if chuck oh but chuck has no charisma it sounds good in theory but chuck can't do oh anything. william h macy could carry it yeah though. he'd have to carry the whole fucking show <laughs> But, what happens next? So what happens next is he walks outside the diner and there's the deputy and Sheriff Strode waiting on him. Uh, like, hey boy, come on over here. And he does. And they just kind of lean in close and they're like, we're going to kick your ass right out of town, boy. Back to Highway 99. They, they, they make this joke several times where they talk about kicking someone's ass back to some random highway number. Yeah, that's they do probably it. a trucker joke that we don't get at being non-truckers <laughs> ourselves. You know, we went to school. <laughs> I'm going to kick your ass back to 109. I don't know. Whatever. So they just threaten him and then stare for a minute and then punch him in the gut. And then, like, knee him in the face and they back off. Like, get up, boy, we're not done with you. But then the acoustic and guitar starts. And the acoustic guitar starts and he's like, yeah, you are. So he stands up and he throws all these spinny kicks that kind of hit. Yeah, hey, uh, get close. Daintily. <laughs> That's the problem, is he does, like, the kind of kicks you see in, like, a children's karate class, that's what he's throwing in this movie. I'm assuming he's just trying to be really careful because... These neither, are not stuntmen. Yeah, these are actors, and by actors, I mean, this is probably their first movie, and uh, they couldn't afford stuntmen, so he's trying to be really careful and not hurt these guys. Obviously, the guy who plays fucking Chief Strode or whatever was not willing to take any oh, fucking well, risk on, of getting in. oil. Because <laughs> that motherfucker disappears. You and son of a bitch, don't it, you spoil the ending. He never takes any damage, never throws a punch. He, old, he old does some loose nightstick clubbing. Oh, Deputy Bowles is left to get his ass whooped this entire movie. Yeah, Deputy Bowles does take... Well, I mean, he's the second in command. He should be taking more of the beating... Because uh, Strode, you know, you got to protect the heel, keep him looking a little bit strong up until the big confrontation where he gets his hands on him. Great. Key word, big confrontation. Big confrontation, <laughs> that's the key word. So uh, he just kind of kicks them, knocks them over, you know, not doesn't knock them out or anything like that, and then runs away. Well, I think we just cut to him on the side of the road where the waitress and her young son happen to drive by and pick him up. Yeah, I think he did run out of town, so they kind of succeeded I mean, they got their ass kicked, but the main goal they got... They ran them, like, you know... A couple blocks A couple out, blocks away. So he, he gets picked up by this lady, asked to use her phone. He calls... Burton. Burton again. Who now who has is, a desk full of empty Coors cans and is fucking drunk. And what did he even talk about? I can't... Oh, good question. I think he's like, uh... I think... He's like, there's something going on here. I think I have to stick around... And then Burton's like, okay, okay. I'm going to keep he just drinking. Keeps drinking. Yeah, he doesn't ask Burton to like call the police if it goes on so long or send help, anything. He doesn't even ask Burton to come because he knows full well Burton's not capable of driving. That's the odd it's part. It's like 3 p.m. I was like, in my head, I'm like, why doesn't he ask this guy to come help him? And it does, now that you explain this, it does make sense within the framework of the movie. He probably knows he's already fucked up. He's like, yeah. oh, he's got the day off. He's fucking drunk. I can't depend on this guy to come help me. That makes sense. If they would have made that more apparent in the movie, we might have been actually able to have a little bit of comedy. But it's just kind of there. I guess we're supposed to read into it that his desk is full of beers, so he can't do anything. 
Yeah. And unfortunately, this is the last scene we get with Burton. He disappears. Yeah, that's it. He disappears from the movie. He's gone. After this, he just kind of storms out angrily. Uh, no, and... they they don't storm out. This uh, is oh yeah, they, no, they do have the date scene. This first. goes to the four state scene where she's like, well, they're just kind of walking around. Her you yard. tell me, and I'll tell you. Oh yeah. Cue love the cue the love music, and it's knock off John Denver. You know uh, what would you even call? I can't even think of another oh, country roads. <laughs> <laughs> so like John Denver song I know. Jim Atlanta. He uh, they're just walking through a field. Throwing rocks. Throwing rocks. There's one part where she's obviously telling him a whole story, and he's just, like, kneeling, staring at a stick. Not listening <laughs> Not to her. Not listening to a word she's saying. At all. He's just thinking, am I gonna... Am I gonna get a little piece of this, or what? Man, I'd rather be wrestling my brother right now. Because he's thinking, I'm stranded here, I, don't, I ain't got my van, I'm stuck with this fucking lady and her kid. It's Nobody like, wants to wrestle. At least I can get a piece, a little piece of this waitress. Maybe he can. And Not yet, though. She doesn't. And you know what? She's a a pretty attractive lady. Yeah, she's pretty attractive for you know. This is a town full of murderous hillbilly gypsies. So and actually, the bar's been set kind of low there. Yeah, but you know, I, she definitely se- seems like the kind of lady Chuck Norris would have took a run at in 1977. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is. I mean, Chuck Norris probably took a run at whatever. It, Whoever was impressed by Delta Force. <laughs> He's like, look, he didn't have Delta Force at this point. This was it. <laughs> oh, it was, well, at this point, it was, hey, you see that Bruce Lee movie? Yeah, I was that guy yeah, he beat up. I whooped his ass in I real whooped life. his ass for, uh, for, you know, a couple seconds of that fight. <laughs> While he's on this awkward date with knockoff John Denver playing, the whole town is just meeting at Town Hall to discuss their crimes. Uh, they have someone come up and give a status report on the moonshine how much they're making they have a fucking bar graph they have a hilariously drawn bar graph like straight up crayon drawn. and it's like moonshine operation chop shop operation whatever fucking speeding tickets. speeding speed trap operation and the fucking judge trimming's just up there in his fucking red robe openly drinking whiskey <laughs> yeah just as his wild turkey it's fucking... like if anyone has any questions any concerns you talk to me. I'd like to think Wild Turkey and Coors put some money into this movie, but the people that made it, this is they're probably just fucking drunk, and this is what they're drinking. I think Wild Turkey and Coors put Wild Turkey and Coors towards this movie. I think yeah, they they, listen, they we'll, catered. We'll, we'll, we'll send you a couple cases, that's all. Man, we'll wild, send you some cases, just drink it on screen. Wild Turkey, I, this may be... I'm trying to think of a movie where I've seen as much alcohol consumption. They're like constantly drinking alcohol. Oh, I mean, there's plenty, like, there's Beer Fest, there's any movie with the jackass every, guys. Or in just... every scene? Well, I guess the they The judge is drinking drink. in every scene. Uh, yeah, that is tough. I mean, Billy Bob Thornton movies. There's probably a few Will Ferrell ones. Sling Blade. Sling Blade. <laughs> it's oh. the only Billy Bob Thornton movie that comes to my mind. Um, anyways, we're getting off track. Let's... We got off track. They're talking about all their crimes. Everyone's giving polite golf claps and hooting and hollering about, yeah, make that moonshine. Which, they're making all this moonshine, but they're drinking wild turkey. Yeah, they do not drink their own supply. I guess that's kind of the rule, you know, don't get high on your own supply, but, like... It also applies to moonshine. Yeah, but these people don't seem smart enough to know the rules. Maybe they... Oh, you know what probably happened is a fucking trucker with a load of wild turkey went through the town. Oh. And they stole it and off And this is there. a special treat. That's probably Jack. I could see... Yeah. They could... Well... He got his fucking neck broke. Well, his it had to be something refrigerated, so wasn't it like eggs? Oh, it could have been eggs. I, I thought there was some kind of hint we got earlier where... Uh... Oh, no, no. Oh, you're thinking, you mean the brother... Yeah, well, the I was talking about the guy who got his neck broke. Oh, yeah, him. He might have had the, the wild turkey. No, but the, the brother, there was kind TV of a dinner. bit that we didn't... Yeah, it was a TV dinner. He was hauling a bunch of frozen dinners, uh, so he had a frozen truck. They keep, He keeps making a point to be like, oh, you gotta keep the truck turned on or else the, it'll all those dinners will spoil. And then he sees the little... The waitress has a kid. Yeah. He's eating a TV dinner. Yeah. Where would you ever get a TV dinner, kid? In this fucking town. <laughs> this fucking hellhole. And the kid also says he's... He goes, Uncle Arnie bought a whole b- bunch of them over. Everyone in this fucking town's related. Uncle Arnie, the fucking Grandpa Judge. Well, to be fair, I think that's a kid thing where, oh, this is Uncle so-and-so, just a friend of the parents. I guess. 
Because I ref- Well, I mean, this is... This town seems I mean, this is fu- a hillbilly town. They could all be fucking. I am pretty sure they are. This is some fucked up shit going on. The only casualty of it we really see is Artie. He got all... Like, every single bad gene went to Artie, I guess. Well, there's definitely some guys with bad genes in this movie. <laughs> yeah, bad genes, but he got the worst. They're celebrating their town hall crimes, and Chuck Norris just strolls on in to this crowd full of hillbillies. He's like, where's my brother? I'm not leaving until I get my brother back. And they're like, well, I guess we'll just kill you. So they all square up around him in a big circle, and he kicks their ass one by one. Uh, and run. Well, he kicks a couple <laughs> asses and then runs out the door. He runs out the door, and right above the doorway, there's a hole in the... Awning? Porch awning. The awning. And he jumps in, up into it. And pulls himself up on there. To hide. And no, and one, no sees one sees that, despite the fact that the door is open. You know, there's at least 50 people in that room. 10 by 10 room. <laughs> so they rush out. Uh, they go looking for him. They run down the street. He jumps back down, and now it's just him and the mayor. And he's he's like, drinking already. Who's, of course, drinking. Well, it's not already if it's continuous. I love this bit. This is one of my more favorite scenes because the, the judge is just fucking drunk. And he's like, he's just, he gives him a compliment. He's like, you know what? That's, that was pretty clever. Oh, well, that was pretty cool, actually. <laughs> it's pretty clever. And then he just starts yelling, he's over here. He's over here. And Chuck doesn't, like, knock him out or <laughs> tell him to shut up anything. He just kind of runs away. Like, why even confront him then? Exactly. I, don't, I just love the scene. I don't know why. I think it's the uh, drunk mayor mayor judge whatever the fuck he is he's uh, acting he's pretty good so he starts running away again and he now he's just running the hillbillies one by one you know one will pop up he gives him a kick this is a great little sequence where he's just randomly running around town it's probably and, the best scene in the movie and people are just jumping out of shadows and alleyways yeah, and they're just <laughs> leaping from windows yeah. to dive at him and get kicked so it is a pretty funny scene i have to say which this scene the second guy he meets we get back to some quality wrestling He just kind of lashes on. They are embraced fully, like, clinging to each other, rolling on the ground for, it was a good minute and a half, two minutes, wasn't it? Well, it just seemed like that. I I don't think it took a while. (laughs) But he does does knock them out with a two-by-four. So they're rolling around. He grabs a two-by-four and kind of uses it to push him off and then weakly clubs him. It makes, like, a big cartoony bonk sound effects. Let me see. Now we lead to... He for keep, me, the the best confrontation of the film, the pitchfork. Yes. Well, for, uh, well, just to kind of highlight before that, all the people he's running into, he has two moves or three moves. Excuse me. He has a weak little, you know, the kick that people do in karate, just where you a, just throw your leg out like in front of you. The spin kick. He has the spin right. kick, and he has sweet chin music. Yep. Out Our, of, uh, he Shawn does. Michaels. He does trip people a lot too. Like he, he does that a couple a times, low, and that keeps looking like shit. A low kick trip type situation so those are his three moves they're the only moves we see in the entire movie until uh he, we he gets into a confrontation with one of the hillbilliest hillbillies a toothless man with a pitchfork what's and his line he just comes up and he's like hey hey i'm a sticky i'm a sticky good <laughs> and he's brandishing this pitchfork which chuck norris just effortlessly spin kicks the pitchfork out of his hands is it, isn't it hard to believe that no one in this town owns a fucking gun? Yeah, well, we see guns later is the thing, too. Like, where were they? I don't know. This is Texas City. This Oh, this is Texas. This is Little Texas. Everyone has a gun. That's what I'm saying. What the hell? Like, they check you at the city limit. It's like you need your passport, your driver's license, and your gun to get exactly. in. Exactly. Well, if you're an outsider, they probably take your gun. Well, you pay them to hold on to your gun. Yeah, exactly. You can't you be go. wandering around Texas City without a gun. They don't want no liberal pussies in their town. Right after, so he kicks the pitchfork out of his hands, just kind of punches him like six times right yeah. in the face, which is the only punches we see him throw. He, he usually sticks to the karate kicks. Well, we do get some punches at the, the end of the movie. We also get a great punch right now where he wanders, he finds the oh, shit. guy who was shooting the rifle at him earlier, and the guy is slightly above him on the stairs, so he tries throwing a kick, which is complete shit, of course. Chuck catches his foot in one hand, and the other one, straight right hand down the pipe, right to the dick. And this knocks him unconscious. Knocks him unconscious. This is the only time I've ever seen anyone knocked out by a dick punch. Yeah, it doesn't happen. Like, you're incapacitated, of course, but your brain's still going. This guy's brain shuts down. Oh, it goes down. Now, well, do you think, I mean, this is hillbilly genetics. Do you think the director is trying to make a comment about 
men thinking with their penises? No, I do not. Okay. <laughs> I don't you dare give him that much credit. He was not. So he gets, uh, he KOs this guy with a dick punch, runs down an alleyway, and now the whole town has uh, managed to group up right behind him. This is like down. some fucking chasing fucking Frankenstein out of the village type thing. Yeah. They got pitchforks and fucking... Yeah, that's basically They're it. chasing him. They're doing the default, you know, rah, get him, rabble, rabble. They throw in the Wilhelm scream. They're just like, ah! It does jump up. I... And that comes up for some reason. Uh, he kicks his way through a wall in that alleyway to escape. And then we get treated with the worst scene of the movie, I think, which is a big chase scene. Well, for I want to point out, plot-wise in this movie, he escapes from the gang of people... Runs back down to the garage where he left his van, and they fixed the van for him. They have repaired the van, oddly enough. Why did they repair... If they want, don't want this guy to leave town, why would they fix the van? I mean, that's a plot hole that wasn't solved, you know, full well. So he gets, Arnie gives him the keys. Arnie gives him the he keys. He don't know better. Yeah, he don't know no better. He hops in the car, or his van, and he just starts driving in an open field, being chased by the two cop cars... It yeah. could not be less exciting. Like, there aren't any big twists or turns. They're just kind of do- slowly going in big circles. A chase sequence does not work. In a field. In a field. You have to be kind of in a confined space, or there has to be, like, dangerous elements that you maybe you could hit a different car or pedestrians, or you can fly off a cliff. There has to be something. There has to be stakes to yeah. the car chase. There's but no... This is like they're in constant view. You're not losing them. You're in a big field, kicking up dust. What do you... Which ends up being... The big twist is that uh, he loses them for just long enough by kicking up a dust storm that he's able to go up a hill that is slightly too steep for their cars to go up. Like, yeah, going up the hill made sense, but the other shit just made no sense to me. He's just driving around in open field. They could have just drove parallel out of the dust cloud. Yeah, I mean, they could have. But and also, he... like, if the big climax, of how you end your chase scene, is he goes up a hill that's too steep for the other car, that's the most boring ending to a chase se- chase sequence possible they didn't have the money they aren't gonna flip no fucking car in this movie oh well we do see that later but we won't spoil it i suppose but um so he tries one of the cops tries to take his car up the hill just keeps trying it the motor stalls and blows up not blows up but it just starts smoking and then the car dies at the bottom blew the radiator and he <laughs> takes his hat off just gives a big old oh, gold darn it and smacks it the crap out of the steering wheel and uh, Chuck decides to go back, apparently, to the waitress's to the house. Waitress. Like, we don't see him meet up with her again. We just, so, right after the chase, Strode goes to check in with the mayor, like, oh, we didn't catch him. And the mayor calls him both idiots, you know, oh, you guys can't count on you for nothing. The mayor's wife comes in, it's like, hey, quit being a dick, just let him go home. She seems, you know, the mayor's wife. like a nice lady. A very nice lady carries herself with class and sophistication she does she gets murdered later she gets murdered real hard but well maybe we won't spoil it oh come on it's implied it's implied so we cut away from this and then chuck norris is just in bed with the waitress were they in bed or are they in the back of his van Ooh, i don't i like to think they were in bed oh shit i mean the kid would be that's what i'm saying in my head and maybe they reference it i can't remember if they do or not but i just imagine they're in the back of his van because why else do you have a van that's the only reason to own a van. You're either fucking people or killing people in the back of it. Or making drugs. The, uh, that's where you get an RV. You gotta step up. Oh, you up. gotta have an RV for that? Yeah, watch you Breaking Bad. Oh, that's... Yeah. That's but, yeah, point. fucking and killing. That's what vans are for. I guess maybe you can move furniture, but just get a pickup truck for that. You're, you're being too creepy. Or rent a box truck. Yeah, fit something more. like that. <laughs> So he's in bed, he's sleeping with the waitress, and we cut to he's having a nightmare of his brother getting gunned down by the, he's getting chased and gunned down by the sheriff and the deputy. By Strode. By Strode. Big evil Strode. And he wakes up hilariously. Ah! Not even that, he's just like, nah, (laughs) nah. And she's like, oh, what's wrong? And he just goes right back to sleep. Yeah. (laughs) He doesn't say anything. Chuck Norris... I cannot believe how little charisma this man has. He doesn't have any. I'm telling you, he. this is a guy who succeeded for one reason. He was the only white guy who did karate. That did karate. That's it. 
And I'm not, hey, I don't have anything against Chalk. I don't have anything personal against him. I'm a stately obvious. Well, I mean, he's I mean, he's pretty crazy as far as a lot of his beliefs. But... Well, you know, that's for <laughs> I mean, a different I mean, he's podcast. Open, he's open to them, but you know what? If you're going to be an action star, learn to throw kicks that look like they hurt. I don't want your, like, karate class point fighting nonsense in my action movies. You need to knock these stuntmen out. It's not, yeah, like like Seagal. Like Seagal this, did. This hurt the stuntmen. It doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, beat them. They don't matter. <laughs> They're, that's why they get paid the big bucks. They're getting hurt. Do they get paid a lot? No. <laughs> they, <laughs> uh, like, the hypothetical big bucks. I was like, that sounded unbelievable. I was like, oh, okay. So he wakes up in the morning, and he gets in his van, and he just turns to the waitress. He's like, hey, get your things and get your kid ready. We're getting out of here. And That's quite the commitment And then he just make. tears off, like... She was like, well, I just wanted to have sex. You, you don't own me. Well, I think she probably does one out of that no, town. No, I guess she, do, she does one out of the town. But he definitely assumed, like, well, you, uh, you know, by the way, you're my property now. Well, so. Yeah, but they're in love. <laughs> but did you hear that not John Denver? They had a... <laughs> they had a thing. They had a date montage video, and they had sex. All yeah. in one day. All that, within, like, a six-hour period, probably. Seven, if you're being generous. I mean, he probably got there, like, mid-afternoon. Oh, I think you're being generous. I think he was there for like an hour and a half for the date, <laughs> and then he got back, and they just went right to the van. She, he didn't even get out of the van. He just honked the. He laid on the horn, <laughs> and she put the kid to bed. <laughs> I mean, it was a whirlwind romance. I mean, it happened quick. Well, the first sight, the kid's like, "Mom, I need to find a new dad. You can't just keep sleeping. You know, just spend a little bit of time." No, did you hear the joke I told you about the creamer? It was hilarious. <laughs> I mean, the kid seems to be a pretty big fan of Chuck or JD or whatever the hell JD, his name is. JD, John, John, John David. David. <laughs> JD, his name's JD, JD John David John Dawes. David Dawes. Doesn't Jack like, Daniels Dawes. No wonder he went with JD. We cut now to, I think we got some kind of hint that the brother is at the... Oh, so he figures that the brother's truck, the only place big enough to keep it, will be at the scrapyard, so, so he goes down there. And in the meantime, the judge is on to the fact that he had stayed the night at Arlene's house, so he, he comes over there with his goons, Strode and Bowles, and they're kind of keep holding the Arlene and the little boy hostage. And there is a really weird bit, so, you know, the kid knows the judge, so they clearly, you know... Eh, there he's like his grandpa i always want to take a screen capture of this and post it on our facebook but it's the most inappropriate he has the kid sitting on his lap and he's you know sometimes you like keep rest your hand like around the kid's legs just holding them in place he was digging in he was like hands deep inside the thigh up on the pelvis deep in her thigh left and right yeah he was straight up groping this child i mean this is some creepy shit. I didn't notice. I've never noticed this, and I've seen this movie maybe three times. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and if you're the child or you're the parents of a child actor, you're already probably a terrible person, just by you know history with the Culkins and all those. That's right. kind of what it tells us. But if you were there and you watched this and you didn't say anything, you deserve to go to jail. It's unsettling. I think I thought maybe they're trying to get into some sort of subtext that disguise some sort of molester i mean there's some rapey subtext in this movie we will get to that with the brother later i mean maybe that's why he killed his son because maybe he molested tex and then tex wanted to open this commune and then he's like i want to just molest people and (laughs) take money he's like i'm gonna kill you i just want to get drunk and i want to have sex with people who can't really consent about it is that too wrong i think that's what the conversation was this could have been this will be the prequel to breaker breaker it'll be called what would you call that it would just be like sex capades for a drunk mayor (laughs) because there will be no trucks in it because it's before uh right and there's no chuck norris it's it's called texas city new texas (laughs) escape from new texas (laughs) we while this is happening we keep cutting back and forth chuck norris is trying to be sneaky going through this scrapyard he's like crawling under cars but there's a helicopter flying around for some reason. The hillbillies just have a single man helicopter, and he's blatantly above Chuck Norris, staring at him and shouting, "Hey, there's Chuck Norris!" And the guys on the ground can hear him, which sounds unbelievable to me. But well, one of those guys is Arnie, so he doesn't matter. 
And the other one is... The junkyard the guy. The junkyard hobo. Chuck is still trying to be sneaky, despite the fact that he can hear a helicopter right above him shouting his whereabouts. Uh, and he crawls out from under a car where the junkyard hobo just hits him with a tire iron, starts a fight. I think he kind of knocks him out for... Oh, he knocks him out. It's not a tire iron. It's a straight-up plastic tube. He hits him with a plastic tube. We hear a big old hollow thunk. And Chuck Norris has to pretend to be unconscious. Which, I mean, this is Chuck Norris, so, so I didn't look, but his eyes are probably still open. Right. And they also do this little false uh, tease thing where he's like, where's my brother? And the guy keeps looking over at the car, car crusher. crusher. Like, I guess your brother's in there? And then so Chuck just lets go of the guy. and He's has like a, a big old, no! And has like a mental breakdown against a car? Yeah, I guess, yeah he basically does. It's weird. It's kind of weird. And that's how he gets distracted and thunked with the plastic tube. So that's how he got knocked out. But it's a strange little breakdown. I don't know why he took this guy out of his word that, I mean, these people are obviously liars. Oh, yeah, of course. So Chuck's unconscious. The guy throws Chuck inside the Crushinator and tells Arnie to throw the switch, which, of course, Arnie won't do. He's uh, our sweet, mentally handicapped, sympathetic character. He can't be... uh, you know what? I need to see a mentally handicapped character in a movie who's just an evil dickhead. Because they refuse to do that. They're always the upstanding, you know, almost kind of like man-children, like too sweet. I want an evil son of a bitch who happens to be like autistic or have downs. I mean, we'll see it eventually. Like, we get crazy, you know, the crazy, the psychos, but we don't have a noticeably handicapped person being evil. Um... Handicap is in like you mean physically mentally. Handi- handicapped. Oh, okay. Physically, yeah, yeah we've got yeah, a few okay. of those. Well, if you're listening and you're a filmmaker, make that come true. Or if you know a movie where they have a mentally handicapped villain, absolutely let us know. Oh yeah, let that. us know that. That's yeah. something I want to watch. But anyways, Chuck wakes up in the Crushinator. He's trying to get out. The hillbilly is you know trying to. He's beating his hands with a tire iron so he can't climb his way out. Chuck kicks him, and he just kind of falls backward. And I guess he hits his head, because this guy's supposedly dead. Yeah, he kills this guy. He kills him in a very meek way. He just throws a little get-off-me kick. The guy goes flying, because movies. So in this whole movie, the only person that dies is this one townie. That we see. That we see. Oh, we know people die. Well, it's implied, I guess. Yeah, but we know. (laughs) Chuck runs off again speaking of running off so the kid runs away from well yeah because uh, the the... mayor and his goons and he sends strode off to chase this child down and then and then he leaves to go well strode comes back and he's like i couldn't catch him he's too fast and then the judge is like you fucking nitwit go get him and then they leave and then the judge leaves because he finds out they have chuck in jail oh yeah so we skip that part yeah how did they get that <laughs> motherfucker in jail so basically chuck just wanders back into the creepy bar with all the dolls oh yeah and then he's like hey where's the mayor at uh she's like oh he's not here and then he just turns around and there's a guy with a gun like oh i got you and they have the big scene where they keep laughing at each other like hey hey yeah we got him and he's in jail like they didn't shoot him or anything it's a one cell gel with hay on the floor uh, the mayor goes off to see him. He t- brings Strode, leaves Bulls with the waitress. The waitress escapes instantly. Like, she doesn't do any kind of bamboozle, anything no. like that. Well, Bulls is outside taking a smoke break because this is the 1970s and you couldn't, smoking in a household was not a lot. Was not not well even a of. hillbilly household. <laughs> you can't do it. And you can't go 10 minutes without a cigarette because yeah. it's again the 70s. So, so she escapes instantly from Bulls. Basically, Judge Trimmings is drunkenly sentencing uh chuck norris to death for breaking a myriad of laws in his town and chuck is just meditating and not saying anything then we cut back to old arlene on her motorcycle which he made her escape on she hits a branch she falls yeah. off her bike but she comes across that abandoned cop car from earlier which is just a still shot of a cop car they must have not yeah, had it's the a footage. picture they zoom in on and it's just a picture that they zoom in on she runs to the cop car, the CB radio's cackling with chatter, and that's where she makes the call. She summons the trucker army. 
Yeah, she, she just puts out a call like, help, they're going to kill him, they're going to kill JD. And everyone on the CB radio immediately knows who JD is. And I mean, this it sounds like it's two people doing like five different trucker voices like, oh, they got JD, we'll be right there. Yeah, I'll come along, I got my 18-wheeler. My name's Spaghetti Sam, count me <laughs> in. <laughs> That's the worst trucker name I've ever heard. I couldn't remember any of the names they said. But... I don't think they even bothered naming any of these people. Well. That's too bad. They should have had a spaghetti Sam. <laughs> uh, he 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 hauls Italian food. Hell, he may be Italian. He might be. I mean, I don't know. A lot of Italian truckers. Stallone set that precedent. <laughs> so uh, let's see here. So uh, at this point, we cut to the guy who got knocked out via punch to the balls. He's with one of his buddies at a well getting some water, and they're like, "What's that sound?" Sounds like thunder. It sounds like thunder coming. And then we see a man with a Confederate officer's hat look up to see uh, like six semi trucks just barreling towards this town. In a empty field once again. In an empty field. How they got there, how they found their way to well, town. Well, they got through there because uh, we missed one scene. Strode hears all these trucks coming. So he sets up a roadblock, which is basically just one car that he's standing in front of. And he stands in front of it. He says, stop. They, of course, don't stop. So he jumps out of the way just in the nick of time, rolls into a ditch. A truck explodes behind him like they knock the truck off the <laughs> they road. They don't explain how this happens. It's shot so shittily. You, I don't know. This A pickup truck just rolls down a hill and for some reason. And at first it kind of looks like he does a little wince like, oh, did it roll on him and then blow up? But then, no, the camera just goes back to him, and he's fine, and he gives a little, ah, oh, shoot, and gives up. And that's all we see. And that's the last we see of Strode. <laughs> Strode is gone. He's The main villain that was set up throughout this movie is gone. The main bad guy is just on the side of the highway, thumbing for a ride out of Texas City, because he knows... I mean, it's safe to assume they murdered him later. You think I... so? You think these truckers are... Oh, I think so. Murderous? They're truckers! Yeah, but they were good guys back in this, back in this day. They are all about honor and integrity in the yeah. law well we'll get to their honor and integrity in a moment <laughs> so chuck norris is being led to his execution by arnie's brother the mechanic arnie's brother arnie comes up and says no you can't do this you have to he just wants his brother back and he starts fighting with the his brother over the gun he shoots once and it catches Chuck like in the side of the stomach, which he just kind of gives a little oof. That hurt. Oh man, it's like it a, a it's like a mosquito bite, guys. It kind of hurt me a little bit. Ah oh, man, that's not fun. And then uh, Arnie starts wrestling for the gun and he gets shot. And he says, "It's getting dark." Literally, he goes, "It's it's getting dark." It's getting dark. well. He's stuttering and doing his whole thing. And again, I'm not gonna do that impression because it was just terrible. Now that the brother has killed his mentally handicapped younger brother, he just feels defeated. He's like, you know what? I don't care anymore. Your brother's in the barn. So he goes to the barn. While he's on his way there, we just see all these semi-trucks running over this whole town. Well, they run through a couple, like, one building, and then they run through... But they run through that one building three times. We're (laughs) supposed to think that's multiple buildings. They run through one building three times, and then they run through a just a wall that's supposed <laughs> to look like the front of a building but you can see through it and see you can the see outside. off to the side like this is just a wall they put up so and it's it, pl- like plaster if that and so they run through two building one building three times and one fake wall once and apparently that causes the whole town to catch on fire the whole town catches on fire <laughs> we see the mayor laying down with his wife they're about to get down to some business and all of a sudden she's like hey uh honey what's that and then a truck smashes through their bedroom wall and obviously runs them over. We I, don't see it, but come on. I was I was tending to believe the truck just stopped and was like, and then he was like, "Hey, I oh, destroyed no, your house." Oh no, we saw it go way in there. He, they got run. You over. think they got ran over? They got run over. The, these but, truckers, they're just laughing and cackling like, "Ha ha, got him! I haven't had this much fun since I broke my shoulder." And they're just ca- there's fires everywhere. They're cackling. They're murdering people straight up. Well, and this isn't just the evil people. They're running through homes. These are women and children, probably. But everyone in this town's supposed to be kind of evil. Well, not everyone. The waitress isn't evil. They could have run through her house. Well, maybe they did. Maybe that's why we don't see her and that kid ever again. That could be. We <laughs> never dead. see them again. <laughs> so, Chuck, uh, while this is happening, Bowles gets to the barn first. 
and we see Chuck's brother is just gagged and tied up, like, on his hands and knees in a corner of a barn. Why have they been keeping him is what I want to know. Because they're fucking him. What was the goal? What was the end game? We stole his truck. We don't think anyone's going to come looking for him, but I would... Common sense would tend you to believe, yeah, someone will come looking for a missing fucking truck full of cargo, and... Probably the truck, not so much. They didn't give a shit about right, that right. kid. So, but someone would come looking for that truck and the contents. Um, anyways, they just have him bound up in a fucking stable. And again, let's be real, they were having sex with that child. You think they're, you think they're leave, leaving, they're keeping this guy around to, oh, out yeah. as a fuck toy? He's in a barn, he's got a gag, he's... He all he was missing was the running makeup down the cheeks. I mean, he was like a younger looking guy. Like I don't want to say like a man boy, but he, he was, was a, a man boy. He was a younger looking guy. I mean, you could definitely, you know, yeah. if you're into that kind of thing, a nubile teen. Yeah, maybe that's what they're. Who do you think? Do you think that was more of a Strode thing? Or oh, that Bulls? was Strode and Bowles. You uh, think the judge went through? through... I think the mechanic probably <laughs> the junkyard guy for sure. Definitely <laughs> the junkyard. guy. I mean, he was there for a couple of days. I'm sure, you know, a lot of the town went home happy from that. Bar. Everyone took a little run at him? Yeah, everyone probably had their moment, that awful deliverance moment. So Bowles gets there, and he cuts the, ro- the ropes loose, and he's like, all right, you can go home. So he stands up, and he just punches him in the face. <laughs> he's like, no, I said you can go home. The kid gets up again. He knees him in the gut. He's like, go home, and he just keeps beating the shit out of him. And then Chuck walks in. And, he and is in his pissed. one moment of acting, he gets an angry face and goes, ah, and basically shoulder tackles bulls who flies through a wall. And they roll in the hay. And then, well, first, you know, he hugs his brother. He's like, oh, I'm so glad oh, you're Billy. alive. Billy, I'm so glad you're okay. And Billy says, what took you so long? Which, fuck you, kid. You, what? Well, I guess for all he knows, he's been there for years but as long as he's been getting Has it only been like a day or maybe two at the most? It's been a couple days. They're kind of vague at how long it's been. Yeah, they're pretty vague about it, I suppose. Bulls just gets up, looks, stares at them, and then slowly walks away like they don't even notice him leaving. Chuck chases him down. Uh, he jumps from the shadows and lands on him and like starts trying to stab him with a bailing hook. <laughs> yeah, but there's a bailing hook. It makes sense. There's probably some hay bells. Yeah. Uh, Chuck, you know, lands a couple kicks, he's beating the shit out of him, until this nefarious cheat throws some hay and dirt in his eyes. Punches him once? Is that what happened? Basically, I, something happens, but then Chuck just goes to his third eye and meditates. Yeah, he goes to, he starts meditating mid-fight. Bulls does not seize the opportunity, he just wanders off well, again. Well, we know what he wanders off for. Some wild turkey. Some wild turkey. I mean, it's been a half hour. <laughs> then we cut back. To bulls in a what do you call that shit a horse pen a horse pen him and a wild horse just a horse running around not doing anything and bulls is just sitting up on the fence post drinking wild turkey drinking wild turkey straight from the bottle he finishes it off and then shatters it against the post and comes over to use the broken bottle on chuck but chuck just did some meditating so he is all he's like hulked up now he's hulked up and i gotta say for me i this is my one of my favorite scenes in the movie um it's still shitty but they do and kind his of kicks look terrible they do kind of build it up with with bulls waiting for him with the whiskey and then chuck coming up to the fence and throwing the fence down and hopping over and then we go into this kind of slow motion but there's also this annoying thing where every like three seconds we cut to this horse just running around well two things one i think they're trying to do some philosophical, like, this wild, untamed horse. And that's Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris' is untamed karate ferociousness. But you know what? We could have gotten that with maybe three, four cuts to the horse. There were at least 20-something. I think real, the real reason we're cutting to the horse is because they needed stuff to, cut, that away, fight to out. cut away to to make the transitions and the fight scene make sense. Cause so Bulls doesn't land a single punch in all this, of Hell course. no, this guy it does not put up any sort of fight, which kind of makes the fight scene not as interesting because he also doesn't know how to get hit like he is not a stunt man so he's just kind of like getting hit and falling down i do like the sequence where he does try to throw sand in chuck's face and chuck just coolly leans to the side yep. does a dodge good head movement man good head movement and then he throws another big spin kick the same one we've seen 20 times in this movie and then he looks at him like oh you're done and wanders off but then bowls makes the fatal mistake he does a battle cry. He gets up, and we get a big slow motion for some reason. Huge. 
son of a bitch. bitch. And Dawes turns, or excuse me, Chuck Norris. I'm not going to start calling Chuck him by Dawes. his. So he turns around and he starts running at him. And d- this is clearly dubbed over. We can see Chuck Norris's face. His mouth is closed. He looks bored out of his mind. But we have a big, ah, while he throws a flying kick that hits him in the chest and knocks him down again. I, it probably killed him. It's a kick to the chest. It's probably a death kick. It probably fucking ripped the, his heart all apart. Yeah, I mean, it probably did. Oh, no, he doesn't move. Just kick his head off or something. Why just, did he kick him in the head? Yeah, well, Chuck can't jump that high. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, that's all on Chuck. He knocks him out. The horse jumps over the fence where Chuck has taken the post down. And it freeze frames on the horse jumping, getting out. Because the horse is escaping just, just like, like Chuck. Just like they're escaping the town. I think is what they're getting at. So basically the horse jumps out of the pin. We freeze frame on that. And then we dissolve back to the town burning. While, to the ground. While they're also playing the speech the drunk judge was giving at the beginning of the movie about how we're they got a town now. Yeah, we got Sidney Chata. We're no longer gypsies. We're legit. And then it just fades to credits. And then it ends. Like, what? That is the one of the most abrupt endings that I've ever seen. We don't check in on the waitress, the kid. We don't check in on the brother. And we never fucking get any closure with Strode. Or Burton. Well, <laughs> Burton's, you know, he probably over uh, had alcohol poisoning, something like that. He probably actually died. Yeah, he's probably actually dead. <laughs> uh, um, so, the, yeah, it is an abrupt ending. I guess we're supposed to feel like, oh, hey, this shitty town that got that was created at the beginning of the movie has now been destroyed yay what i guess we're are we supposed to feel shitty about it it's kind of a mixed thing because they were all terrible who was terrible the town yeah we're, we're, we're supposed to be happy that it's burning down oh i thought you were said we were supposed to feel sorry about it well you kind of do because like they kind of play this kind of sad music yeah and... they do and then the movie just ends and they go into trucker rap they just did not they ran out of money it's one of the it's another one of these movies where they ran out of money. They couldn't shoot what they wanted for the ending or whatever. They're like, fuck it. Freeze on the horse. We already have footage of the town. Show it. Play that shit from the beginning. Perfect. Now, I mean, I think they also had, had no clue how to write an ending for that, let alone money. Wouldn't he just... Like, where would it have really gone? Just hug the waitress and the brother and yeah. go home? That's that's the common sense ending, but who knows why that did not happen. You don't need it. All you need is that horse. All you need is a horse jumping over a fence because it's deep. It, you know, it says something. It says this movie was dog shit. You can't, that's what it says. You can't tame Chuck Norris just like you can't tame a wild stallion. But you don't need to tame Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris is so tame in this movie. He's just, he sounds half asleep giving all his lines. His karate is slow and boring. Like, he is the worst of both word, worlds. He can't do exciting action, and he can't do one-liners. This is one of the... I don't want to say one of the worst action movies I've ever seen, but I was not entertained. It is... Uh, it's a tough movie to find any entertainment in. I did find some parts of the judge entertaining. Um... There's a couple bits of dot. There's some quotable moments from these rednecks. You did have the pirate and the fat guy in the mesh doing the arm wrestling. I mean, it had weird moments, but overall, I could not. I mean, I wouldn't recommend it. I mean, I'd recommend. I'd say watch it if you want to watch a shitty movie. Um, but it... <laughs> but I mean, it's. I wouldn't say. Re- I wouldn't recommend it for that. If you want to watch a shitty movie, watch something like uh, Braxis, the Guardian of the Universe, which by God we will get to. That's coming. That it will be coming up. Watch something like The Room, of course. Uh, well, I mean, this, there's so many better choices. This, uh, man, in an action movie context, I mean, uh, let's just go, where do you come down, where do you come down rating-wise for this movie? What do you think? I'm giving it a one star. One? Um, one out of five, which, since uh, <laughs> we this is our first episode, I guess. Well, it could we'll be. We don't know. System. 
So we go by five stars and or whether or not we recommend watching it, depending on which episode you're watching, because we've flipped the schedule or flipped the format of this around quite a bit. So I'm saying one I star. Just gotta, I just got to let that play out, and when they listen to the podcast, they just be like, this is different. <laughs> well, you got to have a sense of continuity. We're not breaker breaker. We're trying to be bright. This is a breaker breaker of podcast. <laughs> um, I'm going to go ahead and give it a one as well. It does have... a a couple funny lines in it um the uh i can't even say the fight scenes are good yeah i'm giving it a straight up one if you really want to see what chuck norris is all about where he got his start um which you don't you don't you don't unless you're hey this is for the hardcore of hardcore chuck norris fans all three of you or if you're like a trucker exploit a trucker exploitation completist all two of you like i (laughs) Just by the only reason I own this movie, um, then you might want to check it out. Other than that, go ahead and pass it. The, the VHS cover art is not going to catch your eye unless you're a Chuck Norris fan already. Which, if you're a Chuck Norris fan in 2017, you are a rare and beautiful bird, and uh, that's something to be admired, I guess. Hell, he had a good run with Walker Texas Ranger. I mean, I've, they have to be out there. I've never seen that show, but I've heard that one was so good because it was ridiculous. Like, he was doing jetpacks and punching cougars. <laughs> like, he was flying jetpacks, I've heard. Oh, shit. I've never seen it either. I know so. full well he punched a cougar in the face. That Well, that does sound believable. But, anyways, yeah, uh, that was our Breaker Breaker. Obviously, we didn't care for it. I would not recommend watching it under any circumstance. Uh, tune in. We have great episodes already recorded. Some great stuff. Uh, some sci-fi. We've got some thrillers coming. I'm insisting we get back to Abraxas guardian of the galaxy at some point here because yeah, it will happen we, get, we we cover some great stuff we've got steven seagal we've got jesse the body ventura arnold sylvester chuck chuck oh sh- uh, just chuck it <laughs> i'm done with this thanks everybody 10-4 good buddy breaker breaker okay that still went long that did go long